So it's time to buy a new blade. But how do you choose when there's so many choices? Hi, Jed from Cook Culture. I've been selling knives for a long, long time and I've sold all different types of knives. And what I've learned in the time that I've sold thousands of knives to people is that the idea that buying the most expensive knife is gonna get you the best knife isn't actually true. So when you're looking to buy a knife and you're gonna you know, look online that is a harder way to buy a knife because a knife is really about how it feels in your hand. However, you know, when you're gonna be choosing a knife, there is a relationship that you're gonna have with that knife. And I'm specifically talking about buying a higher quality knife if we're talking about a $10 paring knife, this doesn't really apply. But if you're gonna go and spend $50, $100, $500, and everywhere in between, you are making a choice of a tool that is an extension of your hand. And th the way in which you have a relationship with that knife will give you so much more confidence in the kitchen. So what I've learned in helping people choose a knife is to ignore a lot of the, the salesmanshipy details of a knife. There are so many technical components to a knife that you can get kind of lost in the, the geekiness. You know, and this comes down to all the, the layering, the type of steel, the way in which it was hardened. Um, it it kind of goes on and on from all of the little bits and pieces of information that we want to regurgitate to you at the point of sale to convince you that this knife is better than that knife. What it comes down to is understanding the retailer that you're buying the knife from. I suggest going to somebody that specializes in knives. And fortunately, there are a few companies, not just ours, but there are a few great companies that really specialize in high quality knives. You go to them and everything that they're going to sell you is going to be of a high quality. So you, you really don't need to be concerned about getting a poor quality knife or a high quality knife if you're going to a retailer that really understands knives, right? So what you're then going to do is find a knife that works for you within that selection of knives. So what I'm saying by that is that a knife that you grab onto and you use, you, you, you test in a store, it should feel awesome in your hand. You should grab onto that knife and hold it and use it. That's really important. You should be able to put it through the motions in the store that you walk into. And when you're using it, it feels great. If that knife, no matter what it is all about, technically, how much detail, layering, beauty, whatever, if it doesn't feel good, you're really not gonna love grabbing it day after day after day. You know, hopefully three or four times a day you're, you're cooking a full meal. And so you're gonna use that knife a ton. It needs to feel really nice in your hand. And what I mean by that is that the way in which the knife sits in your hand, this is a knife without a bolster. There's not a piece of metal here that separates the handle from the blade. So I get right up onto this blade in what's called a pinch grip. And a knife that feels good, you get a really nice balance. And I'm not saying the knife has to be so balanced, you're not gonna sit and measure it on your finger, but it's going to sit in your hand nicely. And as you cut, it just has a really nice feel. If you feel awkward, it's unbalanced some way, you feel you're hesitating, then that may not be the knife for you. Put that one aside, ask for a different one. And the important part here is that there are knives of, of such a spectrum of price. And that doesn't so much relate to the knife in which you are going to like better. You could have a $100 knife and a $200 knife, where for you, that $100 knife is absolutely perfect. It's all you need. You may look at it and be like, oh, it doesn't have some of the features I really want. And maybe that's a decision for you of like, okay, maybe that $200 knife because you want some of those features. But I stress to you that if that $100 knife or that $50 knife or that $30 knife feels awesome in your hand, then that's the knife to go for. Because all the aspects of what you're paying for in the better quality, hopefully, of that knife is sharper and it's made a certain way, 
all of that quality of your blade goes out the window if you don't maintain that knife at home properly. So maintenance of any knife you buy, you could be buying a $15 knife or a used knife at a, at a estate sale or whatever. If that knife is not maintained well at home, if you're not learning how to maintain it, that's honing the knife and keeping a knife, a sharp knife sharp between professional sharpenings. If you're not doing that, all the money you spend on your knife is worthless. Right? So you could have a $1,000 or $2,000 knife that isn't well maintained, that won't be as nice to use or as sharp as a $50 knife that was bought 30 years ago. So my point there is that knife maintenance is actually the most important part of buying a knife. Buy a quality knife for sure. You can spend good money if you want to. There's lots of great reason for it and we sell lots of really expensive knives, but we sell lots of really good entry-level knives too. And the people that love their knives are the people that maintain their knives really well. So understand when you're looking at knives that it's not really about price being the driver. It's really about how it feels in your hand. And then when you buy that knife, commit to caring for that knife. Commit to learning how to hone and how to care for it on a daily basis to make sure that knife is performing at its best. So good luck in searching for your next knife. And I know if you spend the time, you're gonna find something that you love for a long, long time.